What's going on hockey friends? We are back and today we are talking about a team that rarely gets any love or attention but this offseason they made the biggest splash in free agency and it came out of nowhere. The Columbus Blue Jackets are cooking up something special. It's not ready yet but soon enough with Johnny Gaudreau and the young guns in their system this team will be a problem. So in this video we'll discuss what Johnny Hockey will bring to this Blue Jackets team both on the ice and off it because it's a massive signing for the city of Columbus and then we'll talk about the elite prospect pool that has so much high-end talent. So let's get right into it. So the big bombshell of the offseason, Johnny Goudreau is a Columbus Blue Jacket. Now I was blown away when I saw the news. I was certain he was headed to either New Jersey or Philadelphia but his new home for the next seven years will be in Columbus. And what a deal it is. 9.75 million for one of the best players in the league is a steal. He led the league for points at 5 on 5. He should have been a Hart nominee in my book and was part of arguably the best line in hockey last year. Now, do I expect him to put up 115 points again? No, I don't. Jack Roslovic and Patrick Laine are good, but they're no Elias Lindholm or Matthew Kachuk. However, I do think he's gonna have a great season. The thought of Goudreau feeding Patrick Laine does make me excited and Laine is staying in Columbus, he signed that 4 year extension and I think they can be a great duo. But Johnny Goudreau signing with Columbus is so much more than his on ice impact. It's also a massive statement for the Blue Jackets organization. This is a team that throughout their NHL existence really hasn't had that much attention. Sure there were the Rick Nash years but until 2019 when they swept Tampa in the first round I don't think any non-Columbus fan could recall a memorable moment, but when you can attract the biggest star in free agency and get him on the cheaper side, that will turn some heads. Johnny Goudreau is the kind of player you want to play with, him alone will make Columbus a more attractive destination. If you're a center and you see the possibility of centering a line with Goudreau and Line A, you're gonna give that an extra thought. But I do believe the Blue Jackets already have that center and he's coming off his rookie season Cole Sillinger. I mean, <laughs> what a talent he is. I'm not convinced he's ready to be the number one center yet, but he's got all the tools to become that in a few years. The shot, the stick handling, the power, I'm so excited to see what he does this season and if he gets to play with Goudreau then wow. But he's only 19 so I don't think you need to rush him into a role he may not be ready for just yet. I mentioned Patrick Laine as a possible line mate for Goudreau and on paper it sounds amazing. Laine signed that 4 year extension and he's coming off a point per game season, the first of his NHL career in fact, and I don't think he's going to slow down. I'm still super high on him, he's got one of the best shots in the league and if he can make it work with Goudreau then I can see him having another 40 goal season. The rest of the team is alright, I really like Zach Wrensky, he's the number one defenseman, he's signed until 2028 and he's the big piece on the defensive end. The rest of the decor is okay, Adam Boquist and Jake Bean are two promising young offensive defensemen where I'm more excited about Boquist because he's younger and the rest of that defense is just there for me, I'm not terribly excited about it. But Columbus has two very promising defensemen from the draft this year and we'll get to them later. The same kind of goes for the forward side, other than Goudreau, Laine and the young guys like Cole Sillinger, Jaeger Shinnikov and Alexander Texier, the forward group does not excite me at all and don't worry we'll get to Kent Johnson later. The problem is that they don't have a first line center, Jack Roslovic is not that guy, neither is Boone Jenner or Sean Corrali and like I said earlier, Cole Sillinger has all the tools to become that number one center but I don't think he's ready for it yet. Kent Johnson, who we'll get to later, is not ready to be that either, but to be honest, I'm not concerned at all. Cole Sillinger and Kent Johnson have the potential to slot in as the first and second line centers in a few years, and this Blue Jackets team is still a few years out from being competitive. Yes, Johnny Goudreau will make them a better team this year, but I don't think him alone will make them a playoff team this year. However, there's no doubt in my mind they will be competitive in the near future because the prospects they have in their system that are on their way are elite. So I mentioned how I'm not worried about the future for Columbus when it comes to the center position because they already have Cole Sillinger who's made his NHL debut and played a full season and was very impressive, 
Well, they also have Ken Johnson who is one of the best prospects, period. He actually got to make his NHL debut this season and had 3 points in 9 games and I especially think his third assist of the season was... It was so impressive and I think that's what Ken Johnson is in a nutshell. But anyways, he spent the majority of the season in the NCAA where he put up 37 points in 32 games. He is so so creative with the puck, he's got unreal hands and he's just a magician and an elite playmaker. And that comes across when you look at his stats. 29 assists in 32 games, but don't be misled by those stats because he's got a very good shot and I especially like his one-timers. He's got all the tools to be the number one center and the fact that you can have Sillinger and Johnson down the middle in the future is so exciting. Now is Kent Johnson ready? I'd say he is. Not for top line center minutes, but put him on the wing with Sillinger and Nyquist and you have something very interesting. But over time, once he develops and matures, I think he can become an elite number one playmaking center. Now, if you watched my video on the winners from the 2022 draft, you would know that I'm very high on what Columbus did at the draft. I love the David Jerichek pick at 6 overall, a big right-handed defenseman who's got a booming and accurate shot from the point, he's good in the transition and he's got all the tools you want in a big 6-3 defenseman. For me, he's a future top pairing guy, but I think he's one or two years out from making the team. I think he's going to take a similar path as Mort Sider has, but kind of the other way around, where Sider played in the AHL after he was drafted. I'm pretty sure Jerichek is going back to the Czech League and then to the AHL for the 2023-24 season. But fear not, he may just completely prove me wrong and be ready next year, and regardless, he will be worth the wait and will become a very important player for the Blue Jackets. And at 12th overall, the Blue Jackets picked up another defenseman with Denton Metechuk. Now Metechuk is very different from Jerichek. He's smaller at 5'10", he's a left-handed defenseman and he's more of an offensive defenseman. Now I love Metechuk, his skating is incredible, I love his breakouts and when he joins the rush and his excellent puck carrying ability will make him a very important part of this team in the future. He's got the build of these modern defensemen like Adam Fox and Kale McCarr. Now, I'm not saying he will be as good as they are, but he's undoubtedly going to be a very good player. To think that you can have a decor of Zach Wrensky, David Jerichek and Denton Matejcik in the future is a very scary thought. And then you also have Carson Kuhlemans who's progressing well and could become a top 4 defenseman and overall, the future for this Blue Jackets team is very promising. Sure, you lost Oliver Bjorkstrand, but he was a casualty of the Johnny Gaudreau signing which put Columbus over the cap hit, and hockey is a business and sometimes you have to make tough decisions like these. But if you can get a superstar like Johnny Gaudreau, then that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. I think they're still a few years out from being competitive, but they're not in a rush and that gives their young guys like Jerichek and Johnson time to marinate and develop into the stars I think they can become. The Blue Jackets are cooking up something special here and I'm super excited to see how it turns out, not just in 3 or 4 years, but also this season. I can't wait to see how Johnny Goodrow performs and if he can find a partnership with Patrick Laine and who knows, maybe the Blue Jackets can go on a Cinderella run. Well, that's it for today guys, let me know what you think about Johnny Goodrow and the future of this team. Talk to me in the comments below and if you made it to the end of the video, first of all, thank you. But I just want to quickly thank all of you for the support recently. We hit 1300 subscribers, which I'm very thankful for. And the overall support has been great and I really appreciate it. And about a month ago, I mentioned a potential rebrand of the channel and that's still in the works, but I will update you all in a community post or a separate video when the time is right. Anyway guys, Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.